The only comfort is sweet when we combine it together. But it's all, you know, for the benefit of everybody. All right? So let's give Africa a big round of applause. Wherever you are in Africa, be proud of your background. Uh, now we're going to have the keynote address called People of Value. People of Value. And to do us this honor tonight, the ladies and gentlemen, allowed to put your hands together uh, as I call on Dr. Erabo Igudaro for the keynote address. Wonderful. Let's give our MC another round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know why they have me as a keynote speaker, uh, but I want to thank uh, Mr. Kennedy for the opportunity and for him and the organizers of this program. Uh, and I want to commend our young people. It was a pleasure to enjoy just seeing our young people do their thing. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Please. I, I caught them all those <laughs> No, no, no. I want to recognize my good friends from Bugelu. They were, I was with them earlier today, and uh, they busy, busy folks. They, they do African dance. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> you see, I, 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 I know I'm not properly dressed, but um, I have to leave. But I intentionally did that because I'm in dress. Uh, I was told that there were going to be some uh, uh, immigration officers here in this program. You see, even though they're talking about immigration reform, I am a, a US naturalized citizen, but I'm still careful not to make my identity known. No. <laughs> I, I say that in a humorous way, but I, I think it underscores the point that we we ought to be able to navigate this terrain that we're in. We're in a foreign land, and uh, most of us have been here for a long time. And we have to be able to play the part, so to speak. I say that to uh, say there was a, a, a guy who once told me this. It's a joke, but. It has value in terms of how much we need to be able to adapt to our environment. He said there was a young man that was living from uh, New York to Lagos, Nigeria. He had his son with him, and uh, they were boarding the plane to go to Lagos. And on their way to Lagos, on, on the air, the pilot came on the air said the plane was going down. That in order for them to be able to land successfully, they will have to offload some luggage. And they did that, and the pilot came back on the air and said, the plane is still going down. In order for them to be able to land successfully, they're going to start throwing off some people. And that in order for them to do it equitably, they're going to do it alphabetically. So they're going to start with the letter A. They're going to throw off all the Africans on board. They threw off all the Africans and the plane was still going down. Remember this young man and his dad are still on the plane. Nigerians going, on, going to the continent. And the pilot came back on the air and said, the plane is still going, I want to go to the letter B. The true of all the blacks. The true of all the blacks and the plane was still going down. The pilot came again and said, that we're going to throw off all the colored folks. The true of all the colored folks and the plane was still going down. The pilot came on the air again and said, all of the Negroes. They threw up all the Negroes, said the plane was still going down. And the young man asked his dad, said, Dad, why, was, why are we still on this plane? His dad whispered to him, said, Son, today we're going to be Zulus. <laughs> I say that to say that, yes, we 
We are Americans now and we are proud of that identity. But we must be proud of who we are as Africans. I am proud of, to be an African American. There is this, I know we're in a, in, a, in a serene and church environment, but there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about, in the book of Joshua, God told Joshua to, when they were crossing the Jordan River, he said, I want you to take, identify 12 men, ask them to pick 12 stones out of the Jordan River. That whenever the history is written and whenever, when anybody asks why did they pick the stones, what mean ye the stones, that the generation that will come after will say that the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. So I don't take it for granted that we're celebrating Black History Month. You see, in 1926, Dr. Carter G. Woodson put together what he called the Negro History Week. As a part of his own idea to continue the celebration of black history in this country. And that has evolved to become what we know now as Black History Month. I know Carter G. Woodson is going to be proud for people like Akini B. Wood say, we're going to take those stones and make sure that our future generations, all these young people here, will not forget that we Africans today live in this community. See, Dr. Carnegie Woodson said in 1926 that because of the miseducation of the Negro, there is a book he published. He said, we are so trained outside of our own environment that we don't understand and appreciate our own history. You see, I was one of those miseducated people. Some of us went through schools, but the school didn't go through us. I wasn't proud of who I, I was until I met a man by the name of Dr. Robert Ingram in this community. He was a former chief of police of Opelaka and the mayor of the city of Opelaka. He taught me at Florida Memorial University. And when I met him, he introduced me to the book, The Miseducation of the Negro. And in that book, one of the favorite quotes from Dr. Carter G. Woodson, he said, if you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. You don't have to tell him to stay here or go yonder. You don't have to tell him to stay back door. If there is no back door, he will cut one for his own benefit. His education makes it necessary. Some of you may not understand what I'm saying, but some of you that went to school in Nigeria, like I did, I went to primary school. Bless you. In Benin, Benin, Nigeria. And in school, I remember they used to tell us not to speak our native language in school. And actually they find us as students for speaking our language in school. I look back at it now and say how absurd it is that we were miseducated from who we were as a people. I'm going to leave you with three things. I know we're here to celebrate black history. We have a rich history that ought to be celebrated. As we begin to look at the documentary, there are two things that, I, that struck me. And I pray that I miss something in that documentary. One is that the history of Africans in America did not stop with slavery. I hope that was made clear in 
that documentary. If you look at the history, even when Columbus in 1492, there were Africans that were with Columbus when he was exploring the world. If you read the book, The African Intellectual Heritage, Dr. Carter G. Woodson talked about it. And a gentleman by the name of Walter Rodney, he was from, the, was from Trinidad, he wrote a book, a seminar book called How Europeans Undeveloped Africa. It's a great book, you need to get it. And it talked about all of the Africans that came to the New World before 1619. There were Africans not only in America, there are Africans in Mexico, they're called Mexico. Look at the pyramids, the pyramids that scientists have looked at this. The same pyramids that we see in Mexico, same in, in Giza, in Egypt, all over the world. Even in China, in India, there are blacks all over the world. What they call, now they call them the untouch, untouchable in India. So we, we don't understand the true value of our history. So the first thing I want to leave you, leave you with is for us to know ourselves. The second is connected, is for us to like who we are. And I, and I think that is what this thing, people and values, is all about. I'm going to read a quote from Miriam. Williamson, that I think underscores what I'm trying to say about valuing who we are. She wrote this a long time ago. He said, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our light, nor our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of, of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people would feel insecure around you. You are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in every one of us. You see, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I think that is powerful in the sense that we must understand that we are people of value. We must appreciate who we are. There is a friend of mine, I was talking to him a couple of years ago. This is a, a brother who grew up playing basketball together in Nigeria. I came here on a basketball scholarship and he, he went to Europe. He played in, in England. And I was struck when I, after many years, I've not talked to this brother for a while. And I called him. And the first thing he asked, he said, he said, what's up, my nigga? This, this is supposed to be a brother who's intelligent, he's been away, he's traveled, he's been outside the country. I don't know why he wanted to impress me with that slang or that, or that kind of greeting. But many of our children now are beginning to adapt those languages. Even in Nigeria, they've never been outside of Nigeria. They're beginning to talk all that trash because of their lack of appreciation of who they are. So value we must teach. 